Right before we jump into this video, if you'd like me to send you a free guide to capturing motion in low light situations, just look for this orange box over on fronosphoto.com, put your name, email address in it, hit send it, I'm gonna send you that guide for free. Jared Poland, fronosphoto.com, and this is a preview of the Sony A7CR, with the C standing for cookie, or compact and the R, Steven, you have any idea what the R stands for? Resolution. Oh, resolution. Thank you. We'll get to that in just a minute. But Sony did release two of these A7C style cameras at once. If you're looking for the preview of the A7C2, that is linked down below. Now, what did I photograph with this A7CR? Well, I photographed a concert. I also photographed at the Phillies to get some action photos where I know a lot of people might not use a camera of this stature at a Phillies game or for sports, but I think it's fantastic for it. And I took it out into the park to photograph a little girl running around and blowing bubbles or playing with bubbles and got some absolute fantastic shots. Now we are filming with the A7CR right here. So the video that you see sitting at my desk is all shot with this new camera that is a pre-production unit. That's why this is not called a full on review and we can't open the raw files just yet, just the full res JPEG. Now, if you're wondering, Jared, why is your set so empty behind you? That's because we moved into the new building and we haven't gotten it fully set up just yet, but we will be doing that in the next couple of months. So what is the A7CR with the R standing for what, Steven? Resolution. That's right, resolution. It's basically an A7R5 in a more compact body. It's for all intent and purposes, the same exact thing with some very minor differences, which we're gonna get to in this video. Video. So first things first, it's a smaller, more compact body. It's the same exact body as the A7C2. So it has the newer, better grip on it, which is much easier to hold on to. It's got the front dial for being able to control your aperture or set it to whatever you would like to. And it has a few different changes on the top of the camera as well. But here with the A7CR, you can get a grip on the bottom. That's what you see on the camera right now. Now that is not a grip that gives you functionality like extra battery or being able to go and use it as a vertical grip. It's basically a dumb grip. It's an extension grip that doesn't do anything else than allow you to have a place to put your hand and to put your pinky and to flip the door open to change your battery. That comes with this camera instead of having to spend $150 extra, which you have to do if you want it for the A7. C2. In terms of size, it's 29% lighter than an A7R5. That means it comes in at 1.14 pounds or 515 grams. Unlike the A7R5, which has a really cool flip out and rotatable and all different articulating screen that you have a ton of options for, you don't get that with this. You have the same screen that you find on the A7 Four, so that means you have a three inch 1.03 million dot vary angle touchscreen, which doesn't have great quality. And in speaking of not great quality, you still have a 2.36 million dot left facing electronic viewfinder, meaning it's off to the left hand side of the camera. And like I said, I'm a left eye shooter. It, it's a pain in the butt to start, but you get used to it after a while. But I say low quality on both of these screens because it, it really is low quality. The image quality that you get out of this camera is fantastic when you get the images in the computer, but that's not represented very well when you look through the viewfinder or look at the back of the LCD screen. For a company that makes OLED displays as well as LCD uh, TVs, they should have better quality screens but they probably are trying to save some money somewhere and just know it's not really a deal breaker, but I would much prefer a better EVF that was more representative of the image that I'm actually capturing because the images are fantastic. You have basically the same menu system as the A7R5. You've got the tile options on the back end. You have the swipe options. And I will say it's starting to get a little Avril Lavigne here, getting a little complicated because there's so many different options. Now that's not a bad thing. They're good, but I do think that Sony's probably gonna cut back on some of them because everything is right there in front of you at this point. Moving on to the heart of this camera is the sensor. You have the 61 megapixel BSI full frame sensor with a Bions XR processor. That's the same as what you find in the A7R5. It is a fantastic system head to toe, probably one of the best sensors that Sony's ever made in a camera like this. And the image quality is absolutely fantastic. 
it's the exact same thing that you find in a $3,900 camera. And this one's gonna be less expensive and we'll give you that price at the end of the video. Now, ISO range, you've got 100 to 32,000. You have your dedicated AI processor for the autofocus. You have the same exact autofocus that you find in the A7R5. That's the 693 phase detect AF points that are very good. The autofocus that they have done here is far superior to anything that Sony has done prior that didn't have the AI processor. Now I did run into one minor issue with the autofocus where I had a subject, a batter up to bat, and I had the all encompassing autofocus on, which is the one that will select the best option. Is it the IAF lock on tracking? It should find the biggest subject in the frame because it's AI, it's smart. And what ended up happening is it, it focused on the subject in the dugout. And that's kind of weird. It shouldn't have done that. Uh, it happened every so often and it's not a major deal breaker. I got around it, but it was just something to be aware of. Now, if you're gonna be photographing a human, a bird, a plane, some other type of subject, you have to tell the camera which one to choose. Whereas with Canon, it will automatically select between those different ones. This one, you just have to make sure that you have human selected if you're gonna be photographing humans. Let me jump in here real quick because I wanna show you this photo taken with the Sony A7CR and edited with Fropac 4, starting with Blue's Clues, followed by Brooklyn, C41, Coppertone, DeLorean, High C, Kaleidoscope, Mel Brooks, Saltwater Taffy, Thick, Tintype, and Wet Hot American Summer. But I also wanna show you my all-time favorite from Fropac 1, which is Skittles, with one click, boom. That's how good it looks. So look, if you wanna speed up your raw workflow or give yourself a great starting point, we created FroPack 4, which consists of 14 custom Lightroom presets that you can check out right now at fronosphoto.com slash FroPack 4. While you're over there, you can play with the sliders to see the befores and the afters. If you decide to pick them up right now, they are currently on sale. Or if you wanna get the Grand Slam bundle, you can get FroPack 1, 2, 3, and 4 and save even more. Now, let's get back to the video. Just like the A7R5, you also have a 240 megapixel pixel shift option inside of this smaller camera, which is gonna be great for those landscape shooters who don't need a really big camera to travel with, and this camera is gonna do everything that you need. Now, frames per second, you get eight frames per second with the mechanical and seven frames per second with the silent, which is slower than the A7R5, which gives you 10 frames per second. Not a major deal breaker, but when I was shooting uncompressed raw, it didn't feel like I was getting that many any frames per second because again this is a slower shooting camera it's kind of weird that you get eight with the mechanical and it gets slower when it comes to the electronic shutter so the only time you're going to use an electronic shutter is if you absolutely need to be silent unlike when you use some of the other canon cameras like the r5 where you get 12 frames per second with the mechanical and 20 frames per second with the electronic you don't have that option here with this camera so remember I said there's some differences between the A7R5 and, and one of the major ones is the card slot. You have one card slot, one UHS-2 SD card slot, no other additions like a micro SD card slot in there as a potential backup. That could be a nice option in the future, but it's just one. So you have to decide, is that good enough not having the redundancy? It's really not as big of a deal as it, eh, but if something goes wrong, you're screwed. So you have to consider that when you're deciding if this camera is for you. I luckily, knock on wood, didn't run into any issues there, but it's one thing to talk about the autofocus and talk about the frames per second, but let's show a montage of some of the clips that we recorded with the electronic viewfinder of the camera in action.
in terms of video, as I already said, you're getting the same exact video as the A7R5, just without the 8K option. We are shooting in Super 35 right now in 4K 24, so that's the type of quality of video that you're seeing right here, and we're in S-Log3. So here's what it offers, 10-bit 422-4K up to 60 frames per second with binning and a 1.2 times crop or Super 35 4K up to 30 frames per second oversampled from 6.2K with a full pixel readout. Now this camera is really meant to be shot in Super 35 like we're doing right here. Now we can't tell you if it overheats because as of now it's not overheating in the indoor environment. Sony says that you should get 90 minutes of record time in 4K 60 and we haven't run into any overheating in this situation but we haven't taken it outside to fully test out the videos but again this is a pre-release, pre-production camera. For those who want to shoot raw video, you can do 16-bit raw video outputted via a micro HDMI port. The A7R5 has a full HDMI port, so somehow they could squeeze all of that data out of it. Now you can do 1080 up to 120 frames per second as well. Now you have a digital hot shoe, which is great for putting a microphone directly into the camera and transmitting all of the data through that, meaning no wires are going to be on the camera for that. You have the usual creative looks as well as S-Log3, which I've already mentioned that we're shooting with. The same ports that are generally on the side of the camera at this point. You've got your USB-C for USB-C charging, but you can also USB-C stream up to 4K 30. Let me jump in here real quick and let you know that this video is brought to you by Squarespace. If you're looking to build your very own online portfolio, use what I've been using for my personal website for well over 10 years because it's simple, easy, affordable, and I don't need to know any coding, and I guarantee you can have a gallery up in minutes that you're absolutely going to love. To get a 14-day free trial, head on over to squarespace.com slash photo. If you decide that it's for you, use the code photo at checkout to get 10% off your first order. Now, let's get back to the video. Moving on to IBIS, you've got seven stops of shake compensation versus eight that you get in the A7R5. I guess I dumbed it down just a little bit, but you probably will never notice a difference. Now, thanks to the AI processor, you could do the auto framing, which is really cool that you can get the camera to reframe as you move around because you have those 61 megapixels to work with. But the price, how much is it? Well, it comes in at just shy of $3,000, which is $900 less than the A7R5. Is that pretty insane, Steven? Yes. Yeah, I think that's pretty insane that you get the same exact almost everything, same image quality, same video sends the 8K in a $900 less body. That's crazy. So who's this camera for? As I mentioned earlier, a landscape shooter who's traveling and wants something light, but wants the best quality possible, this is gonna be a great camera for them. Maybe it's a second camera for a wedding shooter who wants to save 900 bucks and have this as a second camera to have that great quality that they put in 85, uh, one, I almost said an 85.12, but they don't have an 85.12 yet. It's the 50.12. Sony, get on that 85.12 train. Nikon's already done it, why haven't you? If you're a portrait shooter, maybe this isn't the camera for you because in the studio, you wanna have that vertical grip that allows you to go and shoot vertical plus the extra battery. Maybe you're a street shooter and you're traveling and you want to take this on the road with a 35-1.4 on it or a Tamron 35-150, to but you get the best quality possible out of a camera like this. This is a fantastic camera. It doesn't have those two card slots, so you have to decide is this for you or is it not for you. It doesn't have the joystick. It doesn't have the ability to put on a vertical grip and get the extra battery. But the images out of this camera put on with fantastic glass are great. This is an unbelievable camera that they were able to shrink it down and keep all of the same things of the A7R5 basically in this camera. So Sony did a great job here. This is a very interesting choice for people to have to make. Which one would you go with? Let me know down below. But if you wanna check out the A7C2 preview video, that is linked down below as well. Jared Polinfronosphoto.com. See ya.